Hello, my name is Naomi Eric Leonard. I am Professor of Mechanical Engineering at Princeton University in the US. And today I'm gonna to share with you some of what I know about flock logic, how groups move in nature by design and on stage, with a focus on my contribution to the making of a dance piece called There Might Be Others. The piece is what's referred to as a structured improvisation. Performance instructions and rules are choreographed, but it's the dancers who make compositional choices in the moment as the dance unfolds on stage. The project intrigued me because of my interest in work more broadly on the logic that explains how groups move. There might be others offered a unique opportunity to explore that logic with highly trained artists who make movement choices with respect to constraints that we could introduce and manipulate by design. In my research, I investigate and apply the logic of group motion to explain the remarkable movement of groups in biology and to enable similarly remarkable movement of groups in engineering. But because groups in biology, engineering, and the arts seem maybe quite unrelated, my first goal today is to convince you that there is a common logic behind how these different kinds of groups move. To do so, I'm going to talk specifically about the logic behind the collective motion of birds, of robots, and of the dancers, and there might be others. So my second goal is to convince you that mathematics provides an elegant language for abstracting out this logic allowing us to unify our understanding of the underlying principles of collective motion across these seemingly unrelated groups and providing an opportunity to draw inspiration from one type of group and use it to inform how we think about another. And this was decidedly the case in the making of There Might Be Others. So by logic, I mean a set of rules that govern how individuals in a group respond to what they sense about their neighbors and their environment and how it is that these responses lead to the richly coordinated movement of the group as a whole. So to appreciate the possibility of there being a common logic, consider that the beautiful shifting pattern of a flock of birds emerges from the evolved responses of individual birds to what they observe of their neighbors and their environment. And the beautiful shifting motion patterns of a team of robots emerges from the designed responses of individual robots to what they observe of their neighbors and environment. And the beautifully shifting motion pattern of a group of dancers <laughs> emerges both from choreographed and from artistic responses of individual dancers to their neighbors and environment. And this is particularly striking in a rule-based piece like there might be others. And so, so watch this clip from the New York City premiere of, of There Might Be Others in March 2016, and you'll see these shifting patterns among the dancers in time and in space. And as you watch, consider what rules and responses might be governing those patterns. In There Might Be Others, the dancers on the fly compositional choices involve jointly negotiating a catalog of defined movement modules with a set of rules. The catalog includes 44 modules, each of which corresponds to a composed set of rules or a gestural idea or a task. Some modules are boisterous like jump bean, where the instruction is to bounce and interact with fellow dancers. And other modules are more meditative, such as or, where the body gently shifts forward and backwards. The performers are instructed to dance their way through most, if not all, of the 44 modules, choosing in the moment the sequencing of modules, as well as how to introduce, juxtapose, vary, and abandon modules in uh, support of the aesthetic of the work. The rules, which impose constraints on the dancer's choices, are designed explicitly to encourage the dancers to experiment with timing, with spacing, with relationships, even with unpredictability. 
And the result is that the dancers, through their collective in-the-moment decisions, create and invent ever new beautiful and complex patterns and create moments of human connection. So my contribution to the making of There Might Be Others was to introduce new ways to experiment with composition using the logic of how groups move in nature and by design. And so the first step in understanding the logic is to recognize that for birds, robots, and dancers, the choices that individuals make don't just lead to beautiful patterns. They also allow groups to manage the challenges of an uncertain and changing environment, especially challenges that individuals can't manage on their own. And this is possible only if individuals regularly and frequently observe their motion of, the neighbor, of their neighbors and adjust their own motion in response to what they observe. So the logic of group motion, therefore, is built on a rule that describes how individuals continually respond to what they observe about the motion of their neighbors. And furthermore, to allow for the richness of group motion, the rules should include dials such that the turn of a dial tunes the quality of the group motion. For example, a dial might refer to how many neighbors an individual observes. And turning up this dial, which means increasing the number of neighbors, improves the cohesiveness of the group as it moves. So to motivate, take a look at this spectacular display of starlings. Specifically, notice how sensitive the group is to the motion of the predator. And at the same time, how cohesive the group is despite the uncertainty and presumably disturbances in the air. Furthermore, notice that this happens and it's all the more remarkable given that the individual starlings have limited attention. What looks so effortless is actually an amazing balancing act. The individual birds use some of their attention to observe neighbors for coherence but reserve the rest of their attention to look out for uh, predators. This is the well-known explore versus exploit tension, which is ubiquitous in nature and design. To exploit means to focus on the well-known and to explore means to check out the unknown. But the two are in tension when resources like attention are limited. So the second step in understanding the logic of a group in motion is to use the language of mathematics to encode the rules, the dials, and the explore-exploit tension. The result are mathematic, mathematical equations that provide a unified framework for investigating the relationships between rules, individual responses, and the emergent group behavior. Importantly, we can use the mathematics to examine how turning dials tunes features of group motion. So I'm going to illustrate briefly by describing application to the logic of the, in a study of a flock of birds and in the design of a team of robots. And then I'm going to show you how the results inspired our novel approach to compositional experimentation in There Might Be Others. So birds will flock if every bird follows a rule to regularly observe the direction of motion of its neighbors and turn in the average direction of these neighbors. So picture a single bird that makes a sharp turn. By the rule, any bird that observes this, this uh, the bird that turned will turn with it. And then anybody whose neighbor is those birds, or among those birds who've turned will turn with them and so on until the whole group turns cohesively. The cohesion gets better when each bird pays attention to more neighbors, but this is in tension with exploring for predators, which requires paying attention to fewer neighbors. So we let the number of neighbors be a dial. The scientists who filmed and studied the starlings in the video showed that every bird pays attention to its seven closest neighbors, but it was not clear why the number seven. With my research group, we hypothesized that seven might be the dial setting that best balances the explore-exploit tension. So using the mathematics, we derived a score that quantifies how well a group balances the tension given a snapshot of the birds and given a dial setting. So then using over 400 snapshots and a dozen dial settings, we found that the score was greatest when each bird pays attention to its six or seven closest neighbors which matches the number found by the scientists and provides evidence 
in support of our hypothesis. With my students and collaborators, we use the same kind of logic to design strategies for a group of ocean-going robots called underwater gliders. These were equipped with sensors to measure ocean temperatures, salinity, and currents. And the goal was to enable the robots to coordinate into motion patterns that were well matched to the spatial and temporal dynamics in the ocean so that the collected data, the collected measurements, would best reveal the ocean physics in Monterey Bay, California. However, underwater gliders are limited in how fast they can go, especially relative to stiff currents. And this creates an explore-exploit tension. A robot either moves to where currents are known to be manageable, or it explores where currents have not been well measured. So for each robot, the rule was to regularly observe the direction of motion of its neighbors, but this time to move in the opposite direction so as to allow the group to spread out uh, over coordinated patterns on rectangular tracks. And the dials in the rules govern which robots were paying attention and responding to which other robots on which tracks. And so with the mathematics, we showed how these dials would tune the group motion pattern to manage the changing environment given the explore-exploit tension. So in August of 2006, we programmed a group of six robotic gliders with these rules, and the robots used them to move in and around Monterey Bay for 24 days straight, nearly. And here's an animation of the experimental results. You're looking overhead at the six robots, each represented by a color circle. The gray lines governed by the dials show which robots are responding to which other robots. And you can see how changing the dials tuned the motion patterns. And despite the fact that the gliders got pushed around by the currents, our design led to an unprecedented data set that has advanced understanding of the coastal ocean. Now, an important lesson we learned from our work with birds and robots was that rules derived for agents faced with an explore-exploit tension provide a wide range of tunable collective motion patterns. And so we sought out a constraint that we could impose on the dancers uh, by way of the performance rules, and there might be others, to create an explore-exploit tension, and with it, rich compositional opportunities. And through experiments and rehearsal and analysis of the mathematical equations that encode the rules, we found a useful constraint in imposing a strict limit on the number of modules that could be active, could be danced at the same time during the dance piece. And there might be others. A dancer exploits when experimenting with an existing module and explores by introducing a new module. These are both creative choices, but their intention, if there's a strict limit on how many modules can be active at the same time. For example, if the limit is three, then either the dancers experiment with the three active modules or they complete one of the modules so that they can introduce a new one. The limiting number of modules is a dial, and we turn the dial down to two to heighten the tension. A two-module limit means that a dancer can only add a new module if all of the dancers have converged on a single module. So without any advanced discussion, we try the two-module limit in rehearsal with the dancers, and the dancers did describe feeling the tension and finding new challenges and creative opportunities. We could also see this in the richly varied switching between exploring and exploiting, as well as in provocative and playful, playful new moments that we saw them create. For example, we saw changes in who could influence the pacing of a piece. Any dancer could speed up the pace by introducing a new module, but now with the limit, any dancer could slow down the piece um, by taking their time to converge on a single module, like the dancer on the floor is doing in this photo. We also saw dancers invent ways to coax others into a single module, like the dancers standing in a circle are doing at that same moment. In one rehearsal, a dancer gently folded other dancers from one of the two existing modules into another and then quickly introduced a new module. And then a little while later, another dancer uh, created a lovely, playful moment when she folded other dancers without actually intending to introduce a new module. And so the other dancers then in sequence unfolded themselves. We also used the mathematical equations to find other dials in the rules that could produce uh, and provide interesting tunability of the qualities 
of the collective motion patterns. One such dial uh, represented the dancer's resistance to switching between active modules, which uh, when turned up slowed the pacing of the piece. In rehearsal, we used a drum beat to signal to the dancers a dial up or down of this resistance to switch. And we observed how we could effectively this way tune the pacing of the piece. Furthermore, the dancers reported liking these external cues, like the drum beat, since it gave them a chance to focus from inward looking to outward looking with respect to the group. So there might be others prospered from compositional experimentation informed by the logic of group motion with the help of a mathematical framework inspired by studies of groups in biology and engineering. And my research in biology and engineering has prospered from what we learn from working with highly trained dancers about the logic of group motion. I am grateful to choreographer Rebecca Legier, who led the collaboration, composer Dan Truman, postdocs Kaihan Osimder and Viswadip Day, and an extraordinary group of dancers and musicians for exploiting their great talent and taking a risk to explore in the making of There Might Be Others. With that, I thank you for your attention and leave you to enjoy one final clip from the performance. Mm -hmm.